I started out yesterday to discuss what the self means in Hindu philosophy. The principle Tatvam Asi, that art thou, meaning that the self is the basis of all being. And being is not something into which we come, but out of which we proceed. In popular language, we say, I came into this world, as if you came from somewhere else altogether, from outside. But you don't, you come out of this world, just in the same way as the leaves come from the tree. And so in that way, you are an expression of it, and the self, meaning, itself. Self meaning identity. Self meaning basis, ground. The world as the self in the sense of the, the cosmos great cycles of time, in which according to Hindu philosophy and mythology, the world is manifested and then again withdrawn. And now, I want to go on and discuss the human world as the self. Well now, there have in the known history of mankind been about three types of culture. Call them hunting cultures, agrarian cultures, and industrial cultures. I was discussing an alternative myth to the ceramic and fully automatic models of the universe. I'll call the dramatic one idea that life as we experience it is a big act and that behind this big act is the player and uh, the player or the self as it's called in Hindu philosophy the Atman is you only you are playing hide and seek since that is the essential game that's going on game of games, the basis of all games, hide and seek. And so since you're playing hide and seek, you are deliberately, although you can't admit this, or won't admit it, you are deliberately forgetting who you really are, what you really are. Your essential self is the foundation of the universe, the ground of being, as Tillich calls it. You see, the problem is this. We identify in our experience a differentiation between what we do and what happens to us. We have a certain number of actions that we define as voluntary. We feel in control of those. And then over against that, there is uh, all those things that are involuntary. But the dividing line between these two is very arbitrary. When you uh, move your hand, you feel that you decide whether to open it or to close it. But then ask yourself, how do you decide? When you decide to open your hand, do you first decide to decide? You don't do. You just decide, and how do you do that? So we come to have a very arbitrary definition of self. If you get with yourself and you find out that you are all of yourself, a very strange thing happens.
you find that your body knows that you are one with the universe. Because your physical organism is one continuous process with everything else that's going on. Just as the waves are continuous with the ocean, your body is continuous with the total energy system of the cosmos. Some people will use a symbolism of the relationship of God to the universe, wherein God is a brilliant light, only somehow veiled, hiding underneath all these forms that you see as you look around you. So far, so good. But the truth is funnier than that. It is that you are looking right at the brilliant light now, that the experience you are having, which you call ordinary everyday consciousness, pretending you're not it, that experience is exactly the same thing as it. There's no difference at all. And when you find that out, you laugh yourself silly. <laughs> That's the great discovery. When you really start to see things, and you look at an old paper cup, and you go into the nature of what it is to see, what vision is, or what smell is, or what touches, you realize that that vision of the paper cup is the brilliant light of the cosmos. But if you try to get one up on the universe and you're in competition with it, it means you don't understand you are it. You think there's a real difference between self and other, but self, what you call yourself and what you call other, are mutually necessary to each other, like back and front. They're really one, but just as a magnet polarizes itself in north and south, but it's all one magnet, so experience polarizes itself as self and other, but it's all one. So if you try to make the North Pole get the mastery of it, or the South Pole get the mastery of the North Pole, you show you don't know what's going on. A guru or teacher who wants to get this across to someone, because he knows it himself, and when you know it, you know, you like others to see it too.